How do you get from Pleasantville, New York, to Broadway, to Hollywood? Well, if you're Gavin McLeod, you take the road less traveled, one with more than a few detours to become an American treasure. On stage and screen and TV, Captain Steubing on The Love Boat and Murray Schlatter on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Gavin is also an author. This is your captain speaking. It is so good to have you with us. I am so happy to be with you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. So I want to go back to Pleasantville. Oh, I, I can know. remember that far. Was it that pleasant? Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, you grew up with different things in your family. There was alcohol in my family. But the ta I look back on that town and I wish we still had it. Uh, things have progressed so much. Uh, it was a small town. It was 35 miles above New York City. And a lot of people commuted. A lot of professional actors commuted who were my heroes. I used to go and stand outside their house and just wondered what they were doing. I did my first play when I was four years old in the kindergarten, and I heard that applause for the first time. I'm sure this happens to everybody that wants to be an actor. You, you get and you say, gee, they like me. They really oh, I like want me. more of that. Yeah. I want more of that. And, that, and I did, after that play, because I had hair then, I, was, I didn't lose my hair till college, and uh, it was kind of cute, you know, won a few contests and things, and, and then I, I did whatever there was a chance to be on the stage. In grammar school, high school, I was there. I put the football team to go to do a, a major play, and somebody saw me. And they both Ithaca College, and, and <laughs> they would, took my transcript, and I got a scholarship for four years. Yeah. As I read in the book, it's so interesting that you didn't let anything stop you. You had roadblock after roadblock. I had blinders on, and I couldn't do very many other things. I thought the only <laughs> thing I could do was act. My first Broadway play, which was A Hat Full of Rain with Shelley Winters, Ben Gazzara, Anthony Francia, an actor studio thing. I had one line, but I understudied the two leads because I can work with and without my hair, see? Back up, Johnny, back up like a mule. That was the 1950s. Then we, we cut years and years and years later, and I've done Mikhail's Neighbor, the Ernie Borgnine, and all these things, and we're doing The Love Boat. And who were the guest stars on The Love Boat going to Europe with me? Shelley Winters and Ernest Borgnine. But and they're on my show this time. Okay, but that's kind of the story of your life because yes. the people who you saw coming up are the people who you saw in, as you hit it big. Oh boy, I'm telling you, I, I like when Helen and Hayes, when we did The Love Boat, you know, <clears throat> the critics thought we were going to sink like the Titanic, going to last two weeks, mindless television. Yeah. It was terrible. And even when we did The Love Boat Follies, which was one of the greatest musicals of all time, with Carol Channing, Ethel Merman, uh, Della Reese, and Ann Miller, and a great company when the review came out uh, the LA Times Cecil Smith said and Gavin McLeod after he finished this number they should have torpedoed the ship <laughs> well I thought that was the funniest thing in the world because we were number one for the week but you've struck it uh, rich twice I mean you had two iconic characters yeah. that America still talks about still remembers still loves what a gift from God I'll tell you that's yeah. what it was well yeah with the Mary Tyler Moore show I had just finished doing Kelly's Heroes in Yugoslavia we were in Yugoslavia and we came back from that and uh, I started rehearsing the musical uh, Carousel I was always doing musicals playing Jigger and Cat blow high blow low and uh, my agent said Mary Tyler Moore is doing a, a pilot and uh, they want to see you I said oh great they sent me <laughs> two scripts yeah. uh, the first one was the pilot blew me away and then was Rhoda's mother blew me away I said this is really wonderful stuff and then I looked and said Gavin for the part of Lou Grant no I'm not right for that I, I, I had worked with Mary before in the Dick Van Dyke show a couple of times and then she and Grant had seen me in play so I knew her a little bit I said I wouldn't believe and he, I wouldn't believe I could be her boss. I wouldn't believe it. So the audience is not going to believe it. I wouldn't believe it. But I'll go see them. <clears throat> and I wouldn't believe myself as Ted Baxter. But this little writer, Murray Slaughter, <laughs> maybe I could do something with him. Nominations for Best Writer, News and Documentary, Harold Brenner, Lester Hawker. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And Murray Slaughter! <laughs> I can't believe I've been nominated, Ted! <laughs> 
So was Murray closer to who you really are? Yes, my daughter said, Dad, that was the most of all the parts you played, that was the closest to you. So, but now what happens when you create an iconic character like that, sometimes it's difficult to shake it. You didn't it have was, that problem. No, I just put on a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and a hat. No, I had. What made that so wonderful for me is besides working with Ed and Ted, Ted was my oldest friend in California. It's all over the book. My love for Ted Baxter, Ted, Ted Knight, Thaddeus Kanapka was his name. Yeah. And um, he was seven years older than I was, and I miss him to this day. And anybody who ever worked with him would tell you the same thing. He was such an indelible human being. I want to find out and go back a little bit, you yeah. know. I, I want to find out. Um, what did you get from your mother and what did you get from your father that makes you the person you are? <laughs> well, my mother, she lived to be 97. My father lived to be 39. In 1945, he died of cancer of the colon. And that was a big vacuum in my life. And I never got over that. My brother, who's two years younger than I am, never got over it and sometimes you don't get over things like that and uh, I've searched searched in my whole career my whole life to find someone a father a father and one day I was praying to God and I heard your search is over I'm your real father I've been here all the time seeing you through the ups and downs and everything and I'm going to take care of you. So that was great comfort for me. For all the success that you've had, you always remember where you came from and how grateful you are oh. to have had the opportunity. I don't know. I, I, I have been grateful for every, every, everything that's ever happened to me because I think of all the people out there, there are so many talented people that never get a shot. And then there's that great question, why God, why me? You know, why me? And thank you so much. I've never considered myself the way you talk about me. I'm just a very fortunate, blessed guy that was been able to realize his dreams and have wonderful children and grandchildren. Any regrets? <sighs> well, Divorce is nothing I'm proud of. And I remember after getting a divorce, I was going home to pick up some things and I had four little kids and David, my one son David, and he was young and his friend was there. He says, here comes my dad. He's gonna get a divorce. Mm -hmm. So I hear that word divorce and I said, it takes some of the owners away, divorce, but it still means the same thing. That's a lot of forgiveness in me. I ask for forgiveness a lot for some of the mistakes you make, but I have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful life with my wonderful wife, Patty. We've grown old together. Twice. <laughs> yes, twice. I've loved her so much we got married twice. And, uh, and here we are in the twilight years, you know. And the, the only sad thing is that when you get to be this age, you lose so many friends. We mm -hmm. and Kay Ballard that lived here and, Kay and, and Carol Channing and Pat Boone, Shirley, we were very, I had to speak at that funeral. And then to, to, they just keep coming. And that's, you have to adjust to that when you get older. But we're still here. You want to make the most of everything when you're here. I love meeting you and Barbara. It was <laughs> so, I think God set that up. I tell you, it's been so easy. And, uh, and I love that you've taken the time even to tell people about my book. Well, it, it is yeah. fascinating because it, you know, while it's about you, I think it's a life lesson for, for probably all of us in being grateful. Um, yeah. for, for what we have, for what we do, and for the, for the people in our, uh, in our lives, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you are, um, you are really the captain of that. Oh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Um, I, I met a new friend, and I'm so grateful. Yes. <laughs> well, here's to Massachusetts. <laughs>
Massachusetts. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay. God bless you. Thanks.